So the name of our study is BELIEF. It's not real an acronym, it's just a name of the study, which I had the pleasure to present here today on behalf of all co-authors and the principal investigator, Dr. Andrea Natale. Catheter, success rate in uh, catheter ablation of patients with long-standing persistent atrial fibrillation uh, is uh, very poor. This is a very difficult uh, subset, subtype of atrial fibrillation to be treated and the success rate reported in the literature with the current uh, ablative technique utilized is really poor, around 25-30% at more than one year follow-up. You know, we enroll patients with long-standing persistent atrial fibrillation and uh, in a non-randomized series, we found that the left atrial appendage is a, an underreported and important trigger for this atrial fibrillation. We, we, the hypothesis is that the left atrial appendage is particularly relevant in patients with, uh, with uh, uh, long-standing persistent atrial fibrillation. Therefore, we designed this study where we have compared and randomized two different strategies of ablation in patients with long-standing persistent AFib. In one group, the appendage was not isolated or was isolated only if a documented sustained firing uh, initiating atrial fibrillation was there versus another group where the appendage was empirically isolated. So we did it no matter what. Well, the key figures is that the success rate both, at, uh, oh, both after a single procedure and after multiple procedures where during redo procedure the electrical isolation of the appendage was done in both groups. Anyway, after a single procedure, success rate was higher, up to 56% in patients undergoing appendage isolation versus 28. And after multiple procedures, average 1.3, it went to 76% in the group of patients that did an empirical isolation versus 56% in patients that did not append the isolation at the first procedure, but did at redo procedures. The take home message is ablation of long standing persistence of atrial fibrillation cannot be limited to pulmonary vein isolation alone because the, the, this is not enough to treat this patient. So we need to do something more. As we learn in the pulmonary vein, where we do empirical isolation of all pulmonary veins present in the left atrium of our patient, we do not target only the vein that is triggering atrial fibrillation. We do isolation of all pulmonary veins in patients with paroxysmal patients. We do believe that in patients with long-standing persistent atrial fibrillation, the left atrial appendage should be empirically isolated to improve outcomes at follow-up.